When you look at this die, you see a common die, but I see waste and deplorable inefficiency. <laughs> when a common die is rolled to determine a random number between one and six, only the pips on the top face contribute. Each of those 21 pips is working only one-sixth of the time. In human terms, every single one of them is putting in a four-hour workday. The pips are not lazy. It is the way they are managed that is to blame. I propose to remedy this with a more efficient die that uses fewer pips working harder. Here is a way to do the job using a regular dodecahedron and far fewer pips. As I'll explain shortly, this roll, for instance, shows a six. To bring all 12 faces of the die into view, and not just the ones visible from above, I depict the die in flattened form via a Schlegel diagram. You see 11 pentagons corresponding to 11 of the 12 faces of a dodecahedron. The regions outside of the pentagons correspond to the missing 12th face. If you roll such a die and examine not just the top face, but the five neighboring faces as well, counting the pips on all six of the faces, you will see a random number of pips between one and six, with each outcome occurring equally often. And this laudably efficient, industrious die employs not 21, but only seven pips, each of them working a 12-hour day. <laughs> what a saving! Dodecahedral dice are usually reserved for games for which one needs a random number between 1 and 12, and the designers of such dice typically eschew the use of pips entirely and print numbers on the faces. But we can get the job done with a mere 13 pips working 12-hour days according to one of several plans such as this. The number of pips visible from above on the top six faces will be a random number between one and 12. Now, since this is the 15th gathering of its kind, it seems appropriate to share a design for an industrious 15-sided die. Unfortunately, a suitably symmetrical 15-sided polyhedron does not exist. So we must accept some redundancy and settle for a 30-sided die in the form of a rhombic triacontahedron. George Hart and Robin Houston have designed industrious dice of this kind. If you roll Robin or George's 30-sided die and count all the pips on the top rhombic face and the four neighboring faces, you will obtain a random number between 1 and 15. There are many such dice, and it is not hard to show that all of them must have exactly 48 pips. But this die in particular has four admirable properties. If you take a face and all its neighbors, you can get any number of pips from 1 to 15 in exactly two ways. If you take two opposite faces and all their neighbors, you always get 16 pips. No face has more than three pips, and there are equal numbers of faces with one pip, two pips, and three pips. Robin has shown that his die and its mirror twin are the only ways to put pips on a rhombic triacontahedron that satisfy those four conditions. This die uses 48 pips, but there is a scheme that shows a random number of pips between 1 and 15 using only 25 pips. How is this possible? The trick is to use two dice. The first die is a dodecahedron that shows zero, five, or 10 pips on its top six faces, with each outcome occurring equally often. The second die is a pentagonal bipyramid. Although the pentagonal bipyramid is guaranteed to land on each of its 10 faces equally often, in the gaming community, this polyhedron has been cruelly snubbed, obscure math pun not intended, because when it lands on one face, there is not one opposite face pointing straight up, but rather two opposite faces pointing mostly up. <laughs> but 
to the designer of industrious dice, this supposed vice is a virtue in disguise. Here is a Schlegel diagram showing the 10 triangular faces of the pentagonal bipyramid, five of them sharing a vertex at infinity. If you roll this die and examine the top two faces, you will see a random number of pips between one and five, with each outcome occurring equally often. Combining the two dice, you get a scheme for generating a random number between one and 15 by rolling dice and counting pips, and a mere 25 pips do all the work. To conclude, I began this talk with a way to generate a random number between one and six using only seven pips. Here is a way to generate a random number between one and six using only five pips. How is this possible? If you roll this die, count the pips on the top six faces, and then add one, you will get a random number between one and six. <laughs> you may call this cheating. I prefer to use the official mathematical term, relaxing the constraints of the problem. <laughs> Thank you.